Hello, my name is Sophie Bullen, and I'm the current president of the Clean Snowmobile Enterprise. Today, I'll be going over some key points and projects from our enterprise team this year. For a little bit of an intro, our team was formed shortly after the banning of snowmobiles in the Yellowstone National Park. This was an effort to preserve the sustainability of the sport by reducing sound and carbon emissions, among other environmental concerns. In 1998, snowmobiles were banned from the park, which is where the idea for this competition originated. The goal was is that if this competition could target specific requirements from a snowmobile, they could be reintroduced to the park. This was done by the National Park Service, laying out some requirements for the competition that had to be met by the snowmobiles. The first one being snowmobiles would be allowed to operate if they were at or below 73 dB, A weighted measured, which is to human hearing, at full throttle. This has definitely changed over the years of competition from 1998. So now what we see in terms of sound emission testing is we do drive-bys past a microphone in which they record it and then rank it numerically on which sled has the lowest dB reading. So on our 1049cc four stroke or the Viper, the stock noise is about 73 dB at operation. We have been able to target our sound emission and reduce that to 69 dB. For our four stroke diesel, our Scandic, the stock noise of that snowmobile is about 77 due to the louder diesel generator. And we have been able to target the current noise down to about 69 dB through that. The second requirement that the National Park Service laid out was that any recreational snowmobile entering the park must achieve emissions below 15 grams per kilowatt hour for hydrocarbons. Obviously over time, the emissions tested has expanded within the competition, but in terms of hydrocarbons, we have seen that our four stroke Viper had a stock emission of hydrocarbon at about 24 grams per kilowatt hour, and we've actually been able to reduce that all the way down to four, 14. So what is the environmental impact of snowmobiles in general, as well as what we keep in mind when designing our snowmobiles for this purpose? So obviously wildlife response to snowmobiles have documented elevated stress levels. Extra noise, extra emissions, extra things in their space is definitely a stressful experience. So trying to minimize the amount of snowmobiles in the area as well as their sound is a huge point. Second, animals exposed to the high intensity sounds are susceptible to auditory damage, as is humans. That's why the sound portion of the competition is huge. Lastly, snowmobiles emit significant amounts of carbon dioxide which is considered an air pollutant. Among other emissions, these are what we kind of target to help reduce them within our industry snowmobiles. So moving into what we've really focused on this past year as a team, on our 2020 Viper, which is our gas sled, we have worked on improving a lean calibration tune. We are currently targeting about a Lambda of 1.05, which is just a little lean, but really focusing on a leaner mid-range during operating. Running lean allows the team to target emissions a little bit better, as well as the performance as of the snowmobile overall. The second big project for our Viper has been a custom muffler with a catalytic converter insert. In the middle image, you can see the model of the muffler that we actually have in our snowmobile today. With designing this, there were a lot of constraints, including getting the catalytic converter to insert, as well as making sure that the entire muffler still fit in the stock location within the snowmobile. The team was successful in creating a muffler that could do all of these things, and we also saw that it had a reduction in sound emission of about 5 dB, it did reduce the carbon emissions, which is what we were targeting, as well as there's less flow restriction. 
Another big project on our Viper has been the addition of a big wheel kit. The purpose of a big wheel kit is that it sits in the back of the track and it is supposed to have less rolling resistance. Less rolling resistance in terms of snowmobiles within the track is that it will reduce your sound emissions. From this and testing and sound emission testing, we have found that there has been about a 2 dB reduction in sound emission, but we would like to target this to get a higher value. The benefit of the big wheel kit is that you can remove specific bogey wheels along the skid, which means there is less contact areas in replacement with this singular kit. Moving on to our diesel snowmobile, there are also some key projects that we've really focused on this past year. The first has been the catalyst that we use, as well as the turbocharger. Those both have been used to help target reduction of the carbon and hydrocarbon emissions that you see within our snowmobile. This also allows complete combustion within the snowmobile and the after treatment process. Another big thing was moving on to a 41 tooth bottom gear. That kind of helped us target the speed and the torque measurements that we needed. From this, it was found that there was an increased speed of about six miles per hour it is required that you meet a 45 mile an hour minimum within the snowmobiles, and our snowmobile currently can run at about 50 consistently. This also did help our fuel economy within the diesel snowmobile. The last two projects, which were main structural projects of our snowmobile, was a push and pull steering system, which allowed us to work around our larger diesel motor, motor while still staying within the confinements of the packaging of the snowmobile. And then we also had an improved pyramid structure, which is the main supporting structure around the engine to the top of the steering, as well as the lower mounting of the belly pan. From this, we saw a reduction of about 10 pounds in the designs. We also had an improved handling and stability of the snowmobile. Future endeavors for our team will include looking into a series hybrid powertrain versus a parallel hybrid powertrain, and we'll also be looking into a track lubrication system for competition next year. We would like to thank our advisors, Dr. Blau, Dr. Mears, and all the sponsors that has made it possible through this past competition year. Thank you.